In the previous episode, we delved into the controversy surrounding Daim. In this episode, let's explore how Daim gained Dr. Mahathir's favor and examine the extent of his wealth. Daim, who is currently under investigation by the MACC, filed a court application last week in an attempt to block the investigation. In his supporting affidavit, he revealed that had he not transitioned from business to politics in 1984, the value of his liquid assets today could have exceeded 50 billion ringgit. At that time, his liquid assets stood at over 750 million ringgit or $250 million. Daim also claimed that if he had invested that amount in an S&P 500 index fund in 1984, its value today would be over 42 billion ringgit. About a year after joining the cabinet, a directive from the cabinet required Daim to liquidate his investments in publicly listed companies and UMBC. Daim described it as the personal cost he suffered after joining the government. Dime's liquid assets were $250 million 40 years ago, and this substantial wealth led Dime to be dubbed the hidden richest man in Asia by the Far Eastern Economic Review in 2004. In 2021, the Pandora Papers exposed overseas companies or trusts under the names of Dime's family and close associates amounting to over 141 million ringgit. Responding to criticism, Dime asserted that he paid taxes on all earnings from business conducted in various jurisdictions and that his wealth was amassed through business activities since the 1960s. However, Daim's exact net worth has always been unknown. Despite the MACC investigating him based on the Pandora Papers and requesting him to declare his assets, Daim has applied for extensions five times, culminating in the seizure of Ilham Tower in December last year. Daim, who is currently 85 years old, started his career as a lawyer and entered the business world in 1969. Despite facing initial entrepreneurial challenges, he achieved significant success in a housing project in Charas, Kuala Lumpur in 1973. It is known that Daim secured the development site based on his strong relationship with the then Selangor Menteri Besar, Harun Idris. During this period, Daim also became Mahathir's close associate. Three years after Mahathir became Deputy Prime Minister in 1976, Daim was appointed as the chairman of Perimba, a fully owned subsidiary of the Urban Development Authority, UDA. After Mahathir assumed the positions of AMNO President and Prime Minister in 1981, he appointed Daim as the chairman of Fleet Holdings, the investment arm of AMNO the following year. While leading Perumba, Daim also promoted a group of individuals who later became prominent figures in Malaysia's business sector. This group, known as Daim's Boys, included Wan Azmi Wan Hamza, who became the CEO of Malayan Banking at the age of 35, Halim Sa'ad, former executive chairman of Renong Group, and Tajuddin Ramli, former chairman of Malaysia Airlines and Cellcom. Despite Daim claiming to be inactive in business activities, he was recognized as one of the most influential figures in Malaysia's business community. Daim diversified into various crucial industries, including banking, broadcasting, plantation, manufacturing, retail, real estate, and construction. In 1980, Daim was appointed to the Senate for two years. In the 1982 general elections, he successfully contested and two years later, he assumed the role of finance minister for the first time. Despite his rapid rise, Daim remained remarkably low-key. According to the Sunday Times, when Daim became finance minister, a parliament house usher described Daim as a former backbencher that no one noticed. He never spoke a word while he was a senator, probably only once or twice, briefly in parliament. This was the swiftest rise Malaysia has seen in the past 20 years. Mahathir's trust in Daim went beyond this. One such instance occurred early on in Mahathir's premiership when he reportedly sent Daim to the United States to deal with the tin price issue affecting the Malaysian tin industry. Daim also served as the mastermind behind some of Mahathir's policies, implementing them once Mahathir had finalized them. Before 1984, Malaysia's financial management had often been criticized for being too lax, resulting in numerous loopholes and inefficient policies. After joining the finance ministry, Daim implemented a more rigorous management approach while strengthening oversight and accountability. 
He successfully accelerated the reduction of the national debt before the expected timeline of 1987 to 1989. In 1997, during the Asian financial crisis and following the dismissal of Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister Anwar Ibrahim, Mahathir appointed Daim to lead an emergency task force surpassing the Bank Negara and Finance Ministry. Daim served as the minister with special functions in 1998 and then returned as Finance Minister holding the position until 2001. Daim, despite his distinguished political and business career, is not without controversy. During his two stints as the finance minister, he concurrently held the treasury post within UMNO. According to a report by Edmund Terence Gomez, Daim's role as finance minister, UMNO's finance chief and businessman were associated with contentious transactions. This includes the scandal involving the privatization of the North-South Expressway awarded to UMNO and the conflict of interest scandal related to the United Malayan Banking Corporation Berhad, UMBC. As reported by Asia Week, 1987, Daim released part of his shares in Malaysian French Bank in 1984 in exchange for a 40% stake in UMBC. The following year, as finance minister, he increased his ownership of UMBC to 5% through rights issues. By the end of 1986, he had sold the UMBC shares at a higher price to the state-owned Perbadanan Nasional Pernas. Facing criticism for alleged abuse of power for personal gain, the cabinet ordered Dayan to divest his shares in 17 companies. Another scandal involving Daim, the recent and widely discussed Renong stock trading case, has come to light. The MACC confirmed last May that they are investigating a former senior minister and a prominent businessman with a Tan Sri title for their involvement in embezzlement in the 1990s, suspected of orchestrating a stock trade that contributed to Malaysia's economic downturn in the 1990s. It is believed that the MACC may be referring to the stock transaction involving the acquisition of Renong Berhad by UEM in 1997. The reported 2.3 billion ringgit stock deal led to a 20% plunge in the KL Composite Index. At that time, Halim Sa'ad was the controlling shareholder and chairman of Renong. However, the media later quoted sources stating that Daim denied his involvement in the 1997 UEM acquisition of Renong stocks. Daim resigned from his second term as finance minister in 2001, following Mahathir's departure from the prime minister's position in October 2003. After 22 years, Daim quietly expanded his business ventures into international markets. This included serving as an advisor to investment institutions in Singapore and Brunei. His ICB financial group was involved in commercial activities in at least 14 countries, spanning Europe, Africa and Asia. During a 2004 interview, Daim mentioned that he had retired and didn't want to compete with Malaysians at home. Often dubbed the godfather of corporate Malaysia, Daim is known for having great influence in politics and business. He amassed a huge fortune from a global banking empire he built over many years. However, with the change in political leadership and the initiation of investigations by the MACC in the era of Anwar Ibrahim, the fate of this 85-year-old man remains uncertain. Stay tuned to Malaysia Kini and Kini TV for updates on national affairs. We also welcome your support by scanning the QR code for donations to encourage us to create more quality content.